if you're thinking about putting a lift kit on this, this is the before. That old strut assembly. What I did is take off this nut. It's kind of a pain to hold that bolt over there at the same time, but it's possible. Take off this nut, hammer this up, put a separator in here, hammer that in there. This will pop out. This will hang down just like the other side. And this strut assembly will come out much easier. Take off these little hoses for the brake line. That way you don't jack them up. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you get that lift kit on there. Maybe this will be a two part video. Well, not two part video, but two birds is one stone video. Getting that lift kit on. This is what should like should look like and let's see how much of a hard time i get i have putting this on fun if you like the video please subscribe i'm trying to get to those thousand subscriber mark i've already got the video hours so anyways thanks for watching all right so i'm gonna show you guys the critical part yeah i scratched the spacer but it's all right um they didn't give me any instructions on this lift and what it turns out to be is this allen key is what you have to hold in here as you tighten up the top so you got to hold this in place press keep pressure against the the spacer if you don't want that damage put some uh you know painters tape on there but me i don't care no one's gonna see it anyways <sighs> And then I got this impact with a nine, that's 18 mil for the top bolts. And this right here, let's see if there's a size that I can share with you guys. Hmm, yep, typical. No size. Two displays. Oh. It is on the bag, so we're showing the size as either 5 sixteenths or 3 eighths. I'm missing both of these. I'm missing one of them. So it's either 3 eighths or 5 sixteenths. But you hold it in there tight against the metal in the back here, back the plate, and then uh, just tighten up the top. I had to figure that out on my own because when you tighten it up here, it actually unwinds the bolt. This bolt, bolt ends up winding down here. It's uh, counterintuitive for being secure. So anyways, thought I'd give you guys that little heads up. I want you guys to see this rubbish. These holes, <laughs> I had to take it out of the Jeep because these holes are not spaced far out enough. So look what I have to do. Metal file to make these holes a little bit wider on each side. That's some engineering marvel right there. All right, YouTube. So the progress on this strut has been a little bit more than unexpected. I had to take out that upper control arm, splash shield to get to the bolts, the nuts on the other side of that upper control arm, which are I believe it was at a 18 and a 19. For one side it was 18, one side was 19. But I had to compress the spring to get it fightable, decompress the shock. I put the jack underneath that wheel bearing, that hub. This jack right here, Harbor Freight. Put this plate right under here. Lift it up and then mount it in, hammer it in to slide into that hole over there. But I will, uh, I'm will i going to show you guys the process on the next side, but to make it easier, you will have to take out that upper control arm, the splash shield to get to all of this mess. Let's go to the other side. All right, YouTube. So as I mentioned earlier, right before I go to the other side, I'm going to have to put these spring compressors in now I bought this spring, this spring compressor from Amazon, but you see it doesn't fit on this spring too well. I gotta hammer it in and mallet it in and on both sides of the spring. So one here, 
one here and you saw earlier how i had it on that's the only way this thing will give you um the space that you need but of course i'm not keeping these rims on here and these tires but that's it installed look at the degree that upper control arm is they do sell a better upper control arm for the lift which i will be getting i didn't buy it now because i honestly forgot didn't realize it but we're gonna get that spring compressed and uh what i also had to do is take out the splash shield in order to get to those bolts on the other side i told you that already all right here we go if your car does not look like this then adding this lift on this spring on the strut will not fit you'll have a hard time so take out that upper control arm everything should look as you see here and i'm going to try to give you a step-by-step -step on how to put it in there with only one hand uh, so i'm going to grab this spring actually let's see what we got here i'm going to grab this spring now i have four hands so I have, you're gonna go in bottom first. See this bottom of the strut needs to go in here onto this lower control arm. Then we're gonna put this bolt in. You're getting to see the struggle of this job. It's a lot of work. It's pretty heavy, so don't think you're gonna do this job like within two hours. It's a heavy piece of machinery we got here. Uh, I'm a smaller guy. In retrospect. So you see how this is just sliding right up here? Not a bing. Yeah, that's not enough. We're gonna have to hammer. It's a three inch lift. We're gonna have to hammer it into those holes. Oh, someone might think, oh, you're gonna damage the threads, yada, yada. The other side wouldn't have been installed if I damaged anything. The other side is installed. So now you see the bottom there. The hub is dragging on the floor. We need to jack this truck up more on this side so that we can position it and hammer it. So I'm gonna stop the video now and I'm gonna jack up the truck. All right, so we have the jack underneath this hub. We're gonna start jacking it up so it compresses this shock. Always have a jack stand, safety rules. Tap it in a little more so we don't. Jack it up. So we can compress that shock. Help it fit in there a little more. And also we can spin this around. So it's getting a little more funky. You get the point. We're going to keep hammering it. Let me see. Hammering it until we get it in those holes. If there's another way to do this, find it. Find it on your own. I didn't find it on YouTube, so I'm going my way. Let's see when we get it in. All right, so now what we have here is the getting this arm to connect this upper. 
control arm. So you see the big difference, about three inches worth, because it's a three inch lip. Go figure. Mosquito. So I put the jack underneath that hub down there, and as you turn this, it sort of moves it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of turn it in a way that it can get get. And you can always finagle it. So there we go. A little bit closer. Now you just start jacking it up. Jack it up. So it gets where it needs to get. We're getting there. There we go. See that pretty clearly in the video? It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Kind of get that up just enough. The whole car move. Just be high enough to get the bolt started. If it won't do it with the jack, we'll just hammer it down. Maybe. Still not working. Take it out and start over. All right, guys, so this is the lift in the back. Now, took the brake caliper out, I'm just laying it right here, letting it rest here. Now, if you look back here, I have this rear upper control arm or sway link, whatever you want to call it, unbolted. And that's because if you see here, I took a grinder and I cut through this. Uh, gas tank shield because this if you look closely is already getting banged just by me um, Working on this this three inch lift is gonna set that off and it's always gonna hit from bump So I have notched out these cuts and I'm gonna hammer it out and bring it down um, Or maybe I could just grab hold of it with the, the wrench Maybe I can adjust the bolt and just pull it down. That'll be that. But this here, sort of self-explanatory. Get that coil out with the spring compressor if you need. I need it to. And bolt that up. So again, everybody talks about on these lifts, they don't come with the bolt. I went to um, whole, uh, Lowe's and it's gonna be a metric bolt. Let's see if you can see that there, it just says, that's the grade I, I presume, but Get yourself a metric size, bring your old bolt with you. This is the bolt that came out of the lift, of the bump stop. And uh, this is the bolt that I bought. It's about, I got a, a uh, 90 millimeter bolt, which is like, I believe 90 millimeters turns into like three and a half. But really it could have got away with a three inch bolt because this goes in to the bump stop underneath there. And either way, um, is what it is. But this is what it should look like when you put that three inch lift in the back. And let's just keep moving along.